Hello and welcome back my friends to Kerbal Space Program. As you can see on the bottom left this is in a in the sandbox mode and today I decided to make a um, SSTO guide, so single stage to orbit vehicle guide. So that's probably also the reason why you came here because you're a new player and you'd like to get a few tips and tricks or just plain just straight up how to build something that gets um, like a plane into orbit. So without further ado, I guess we can start the build. So um, first of all, I decided to make a Mark II space plane since the parts look the most realistic in terms of cockpit. Um, I mean, in terms of how you would expect the space plane to be, since I don't think someone would really go for shuttle-like craft. Okay, now there you go. So yeah, of course, this has some similarities for the shuttle. But it's pretty big and heavy and bulky and not really pointy since you're going really fast you need something pointy this would also work but it's kind of anyways it's up to you to decide what and i'm going to use this just as a point of reference more or less and for cargo or something what we're going to bring into orbit is a crew so one crew cabin of course you can swap out the crew cabin for a where do we have it um one of those cargo bays or even the bigger cargo bay and then you have to fiddle around with the aerodynamics a little bit but <coughs> generally speaking let's go for this and since I haven't built a lot of SSTOs in the recent time and of course a docking port so we can dock to a space station and so in the recent time I haven't really built any SSTOs so it is a little bit of good fiddling around and trying it out how it's going to work I have done one thing just um, yesterday just to try out if I'm still capable of doing some, a few things so it'll be the second more or less SSTO in the past on one half years or so for me but hey it'll you can also see kind of how it takes some trial and error to get those things flying so this is our main kind of all primary stage or pr first part of the rocket or of the space plane next we're going to need a fuselage part where we can store a lot of our fuel which we need to get into orbit and yeah so let's go with so in theory you need kind of liquid fuel for jet engines and maybe for the nuclear if you want to go further than just low carbon orbit since the only the nerve and the um, all jet engines use only liquid fuel and all the other engines use also rocket like rocket fuel with oxidizer so the point is a good ratio between liquid fuel and liquid fuel and oxidizer more or less so let's go with one LFO tank so LFO is liquid fuel and oxidizer of course and then, 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 let's either go for another shorter one, followed by a bicoupler. Where do we have it? Bicoupler. So you can double the main of engines, more or less. That's the reason why I'm going for the bicoupler, to tell the truth, yeah. And of course, it looks also cool having two engines. So either this kind of the length, or you can also prolong it by instead of taking one of these going with doubling the liquid fuel amount you can also do this, this is a little bit bigger then you could, let, let's go with this one so we have here 5, 480, 880 1000 1000 something uh, oxidizer or so okay and now of course we need some wings but before slapping on some wings we need more 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 okay so the, the idea like, let's throw first some engines on it the idea would be now for example to slap on two of those new rocket engines and then you will be able to build something that can go probably even further than just low carbon orbit of course i have my really a lot of oxidizer so we need something that uses oxidizer and this will be the rapier engines which have a um, air breathing and the closed cycle, so rocket mode. Now, before that, let's say, do we have enough? So, this is our liquid fuel storage. No, you know what? Let, let, let's slap those onto this so we have a more beautiful, more beautiful ending. Like, kind of, um, that the placement of the everything where everything ends is more or less on the same higher and yeah, the same side plane, yeah. You get what I mean. So now, since those two are definitely not, don't have enough power to 
push us fast enough to get us somewhere we need more engines one option would be going for another set of two rapiers somewhere like for example slapping another kind of um two on the side two of those and then slapping another rapier but then yeah this is one option or you can go inside of rapiers the whiplash yeah the this turbo jet engines which are which give us more thrust at lower speeds and lower altitude how, how, however they will burn out faster so they will run out of oxygen so from the air faster than the rapiers however they are more efficient they go around 4000 to 3200 um, so yeah, I just pay like impulse seconds okay so that's one option as you can see there's a slightly curved down this was not planned but it looks pretty decent and of course tr try and get it on to the same height like everything onto the same of course if I disable this it won't work so now you have this one and the okay now this is on the one line this is one option this is pretty big it will be pretty massive this is one option of course you can go with two of those of course and I guess for simplicity, let's let's just leave it this way. I think this will be fun. I don't need this much. Thanks. I guess having a little bit more oxidizer would be decent, since well, okay, this should be enough. Whatever we will see. I'm gonna test flight and then. Uh, but before test flying is something, we need of course some wings and more things. Okay. First of all, we need of course some intakes for the air for the two no, for the four engines jet engines. Now we can either prolong this even up until around here but the main point is where you're left is at two and something is to slap on those big wings. I really like those wings. Now it's taking the offset too by clicking the number two on the keyboard and then slightly pillot this. Okay this was a little bit too much. Slightly less. Okay. So that this is in line here and we can now place on some control surfaces which are of course very important if you're flying an aircraft. Otherwise, you just a thing that can that flies but can maneuver. Now slapping on those. There we go. Okay, this looks good. Now we have a pretty big difference here. That's not. That's not. That looks not good. So we definitely need something up here. Let's go for this fuel tank. Now you can take this as well and bring it up front there you go now you can slap this one on it looks good and um, for something up front here would be also look good would also look good and increase our fuel capacity as well since in this fuel in this wings and where do we have it and this wing we can store some fuel okay now we can either use the offset tool again to bring it inside there though that's not really what I like to do, I don't really like to offset a lot of things. If a little bit is fine, but this is like this is the the just at the end where I'm still thinking it's acceptable. Barely, I don't think I'll do this now. It would it would it would look pretty good from here. You can see the line going here, and then the wing ends more or less right in between the air intake and this fuselage pod, and then it goes out into the big wings. It would look good though, let's leave it for video's sake so nobody can um, go and take part clipping, is cheating, or stuff like that. So yeah, I'm gonna, just gonna use small wings, which I will clip inside just tiny bit, so it's just in the f in the air intake. It's up until the air intake. Otherwise it would look pretty awkward and not in line with the whole thing. <clears throat> yeah, aesthetics are pretty important, I guess. Now let's go with 4R. Uh, Either going with two canards. Let's go with two canards here and one big, and still and one big. You control like four for really a lot of um, stability. It's really important to have those for stability. Otherwise, you fl you will spin out of control pretty easily. Now just disable roll and pitch, especially the side ones. So there we go. <coughs> Let's fill this wing up. I'm halfway with liquid fuel and then the last two things that we need to do is 
landing gear, of course, since we're going to land this thing again. Or at least I hope that we will. And of course, back here around. Let's place them outside since we have the third layer. Yeah, third layer. We could, of course, go with three landing gear, so that's probably an overkill. Yeah. Let's leave it this slightly further back there. Let's check center of mass, center of lift. This definitely works out pretty decently. And air brakes. We do have air brakes. Air brakes are always nice to have. And now if the last thing before I'm um, taking this puppy out into the test flight is action groups. So I usually go for first action groups toggling the rapiers, second action group toggling the secondary engines, then fourth group is the LV-99s, and uh, like these Nerf LVNs. Action group three is always switch mode for me. So for me personally, you can of course choose your own um, um, groups according to your preferences. So I think this is fine now for the very first test flight. So test zero one and save go. Let's see how this thing works. Of course, it's not um, yet up to orbital. Kind of, we don't have any solar panels or RCS. Neither do we have really a lot of other pretty important things. But let's just start. Action group one, action group two. Mm, yes, and then start throttling up, and we're accelerating on the runway. Let's see whether this thing can take off easily at around. 90 up to 120 meters per second of course so 80 90 let's try pulling up it's not working we're at 110 it's barely pitching up 120 and we got a lift off okay it works can it should be a little bit easier to lift off so i'm going to add some more controls over this probably some canals or other lifting more wings just generally more wings Okay, it is pretty stab stable in flight though. You can see a little bit the wobbling between the fuel tanks, so there will be some struts later on. I will strut this, so otherwise this thing will break off. Pretty high G-turn. So let's just accelerate the time. And get this, get a little bit more speed. Not breaking off at 4 times regular speed, please. Okay, let's go 3 times then. 400 meters per second, 500 meters per second, pulling up and it breaks. This is something I expected. Okay, on this now we can revert back to the SPH. So, as I said, it's just a test flight. And you always have to fly around testing things out before you can really be confident in your craft. It's not like you're going to do everything first try. Except you're a genius, of course. That is. <laughs> and like I said earlier, I'm really out of practice and building as a I have no clue what I'm doing here so might as well be my first one okay so the wings are pre probably not gonna um, hold up to the yield G forces and we need more wing swifts generally speaking you know to get this this thing off the ground so I guess I'm gonna go with the long wing thing which I originally decided not to take. Okay, this is pretty long. This is pretty long. Let's okay up until here. This is good. Now we can fill this up as well. Fifty percent. I think it's a good value. Just out of experience, it is okay. I mean, it works pretty often. Now I can need more lift. Not yet adding. Air intakes, more lift, 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 lift. Some sort of long, sharp wings. Oh yeah, this one looks good. Let, no, not up there. On the same height, and then taking it and putting it a little bit inside. Now we have a really almost continuous wing. Not quite, but hey, whatever. Um, con concerning our thrust to take off, we were not barely, but could be better. Let's have a look at this. It's fine. I really think you're gonna try this again. Just just with this small tweaks, adding a few more wings. Wings, yeah. Wings surface area 
Egg, and there you go. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this yet, but tell me whether you like me building stuff on um, online. Live on camera so you can get my um, live impressions on it and my thoughts on how to change things up in order to get the craft working better. And I think now we're flying a little bit better. What do you think? I mean, it is. It was a faster takeoff with just a small increase in wing area. Okay, let's accelerate again. And it is now even pointing upwards. Earlier once I was time accelerating, it flew down pretty fast. Now it's still pitching up at the around 35 degrees. So, 20, 25, sorry, not 35, 25 degrees. So yeah, this should definitely work out better. However, we are now, we stopped accelerating at 300 meters per second. So let's go more into a horizontal plane. Let's see whether we can go accelerate up to 400 meters per second because that's around the speed mark where the rapiers really kick in. Like, really, really kick in. And now we are hitting 450 meters per second. That's great. 70, 80, 500. And now we should really start pitching horizontally in order to build most a lot of orbital velocity. That looks really good. Slowing down time again. Slightly less pitch again. 5 degrees. We're now past 1500, 16, 16 kilometers. 1350 meters per second. Approaching flame out. Pitching down again. We're at 20 kilometers. God damn it, that's really high. Surprisingly high. I re I've never, never flown this high still in jet engines. Holy moly. Okay, now we're at 10 meters, like 10, around 10 meters per second upwards velocity. And we sl started slowing down, and now I guess we can s um, activate our nerve engines for more thrust, of course. And once the G, the whiplash jet engines flame out, we're gonna. We're gonna uh, switch over to close cycle on the rapiers I, s I can a little bit feel that it's not quite stable, not perfectly stable we need some RCS on it, definitely okay I'm gonna switch over now manually Let's see whether we can get this girl up into space. Let's go quickly over into the map view. Let's see where are we. 27 kilometers at um at post. Okay, well the transition from closed from open cycle to closed cycle was at a very low speed, so one thousand four hundred and we are already a third through our oxidizer and usually you should only start using on um, close cycle at 1400 meters per second or even better even later if it's later so I guess we could a improve our, our in-air performance more control over our craft and um, I have no clue what else really and we should pitch up more so we can gain more vertical speed even though that's extremely fighting against the drag, we're not accelerating at all, whatsoever. Okay, at least nothing. I mean, our speed changes almost none. That's a huge problem, of course. We're fighting really against the, the, the atmosphere, and that's really inefficient. And we're almost out of fuel. And we haven't even reached 60,000 meters of um, as an apopsis in a minute so that's definitely a failure I can of course accelerate again our nerve engines won't bring us even close to space will they so since they're really low thrust 
No, this might even work out in theory at least. I mean, we're pushing our epapsis really inefficiently forward all the time, though it's working more or less. And now we're just on the brink of going into orb into a suborbital trajectory, at least in the future, we will be. Now you can go into prograde, follow just the prograde marker. Now just go po point down. Now we, we can hear we're in space since the music turned on. And we get the periapsis. So now just a little bit more and now pointing again. And there we go. We're in an orbit with 2000 liquid fuel left. Oh my goodness, this is really a, gr a good assist here, yeah, even though this is just a test flight, really. Since we have no solar panels, no communication array, or, or anything other interesting. No, I've already confirmed that this is an assist here which works. Holy moly. <clears throat> I'm slightly surprised by, by, my, by my own actions at the moment, but whatever. And the beautiful moon right up there. Let's just quickly take a screenshot, just for giggles. And now let's jump into... Let's go back. Okay, it took a little bit longer than I expected and really wanted to take. Though I definitely showed you that you can um, go somewhere with this with this thing. Okay, that's good. That's really good. Still, there's a lot of lot of things that I could improve upon. For example, we need RCS. So RCS tanks is here. This is RCS can take a engine up here and an engine down there. So those engines are reaction control thrusters, which are main which main purpose is to kind of dock with the space station, if you ever want to, that is. Of course. However they are also pretty handy in in if you're not too good in controlling the craft, they would help you out as well. Okay, now what did I undo? I und okay, this one, okay, again, you then something here on this side. Of course, two top two double symmetry. Okay, it's it's not really going where I wanted to go, so whatever. Then let's put two on the back here. So we get some down force, the same from underneath to go up force. Now something lateral would be really good. However with those huge wings it's not gonna work will it? Let's just slap two on the side and say that's good. One above the wing, one below the wing. This should more or less cancel out this slight angular momentum. Okay, now you can transit to left, to the right, up, down. Perfect. Mm, I don't need more. I need more e what what are you we really still need our solar panels and other things to gain some electricity on we're in space and have nothing else running. Six solar panels here and two down here should be enough. Let's throw them here. This should be good and they probably won't burn up, or at least that's what I hope. Then next, 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 next. Mm, more intake, like smaller intakes for more air. Could go. There you go, somewhere here. No, that's not good. Let's throw the other two right behind our solar panels. There we go. So those intakes just increase the airflow by a tiny bit. It's definitely nothing bad to have them. Increase the air, increase the threat, increase everything. You know. And. Um, let's see, what do we need to really finish off our SSTO? We barely managed to get into space because we had not enough good efficient flight or I'm just a little bit you know, thinking about what we could have done better or how to engineer this another way. The other thing is of course we could increase our fuel by a uh, by pretty big amount surprisingly. However, I don't think we need more rocket fuel. I mean, having more rocket fuel is never a bad idea, of course, yeah. Though, it's definitely not necessary. I increased now the fuel by 20 units. Let's go by, by 40 units. That's not, not really a lot, is it? If we, sorry, if we go here, we can go, let's see, our mass is 
65 tons. Now let's go down by how many had. Okay, that's a hundred. Okay, and one hundred kilograms. Okay, whatever. That's not a big issue. Okay, and I guess this is it. This is really it. I mean, in terms of having a SSTO built. I mean, I proved it just a couple months ago that it works. So, yes, I guess that's... Okay, let's call this thing something. SSTO... I don't know. OP <laughs> uh, M001. Let's go. I'm not really creative with names, so if you want to give this thing a special name, write down it in the comments below. And 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 yeah. One thing I forgot is to toggle intakes now, or at least assign all those small intakes to be toggled as well. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now we can save this and I think as a last thing let's go and do another demonstration of how this thing works or fails or what whatever. Then engine one, engine two, full thrust, let's go. Jebediah in the cockpit. Speaking of kind of doing a mission or so, the thing of this Clamperton docking port is of course to dock with something, though I'm not really confident in my own personal skill in docking with an inline docking port with our space station. That's not really something I think I'll be able to do. But so I won't do this, I so or I won't showcase it. But, but if you want a challenge you can feel free to do this really. Probably it's just practice, practice, practice. After after rendezvousing ten times, so you're gonna get the eleventh time, pretty decent and not 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 quite effortlessly, but with not a lot of effort compared to the others, of course. Or at least that was how it was for me. But anyways, I think mm, I think I will stop talking right now and fast forward the first part of the ascent so that you don't have to sit through I know the first 10 kilometers or so
Okay, so we are here back to at thirty thousand at thirty thousand meters here and pushing up towards space and just a thing that I'd like to mention now and yeah is that you should ha um when you're building this you really have to be really gentle and careful with the controls otherwise the thing could in theory spin out of control even though now it's definitely better than the first time or I'm just a lot more, way a lot gentler more gentle yeah so now that's up to you and I guess now we have a little bit of oxidized left I'm still going to make an engine main engine cut out so we can kind of save off this 50 units of oxidizer if we really need a big push of 300 kilonewtons thrust yeah so because one of those engines produces the triple the amount of thrust of one of those so yeah but this nerf engine should be now able to push us into safe and stable orbit since we already had this last time this more or less inefficient issue of getting pushing our apoapsis up 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 right barely up in front of us however we are pretty close to orbital velocity with with 20 like 2100 meters per second so it's more or less just a problem of height and we're gonna reach this height pretty soon and 70 kilometers 75 can already cut off our engines of course and they already 78 okay I, I didn't even want to go up this fast this far up and they're just coasting <coughs> through space without using it so you can go and make a really efficient circularization burn at our purposes even though the last part was not a really efficient fight against the atmosphere and by no means this is the best of it this is by no means the best um way to bring a space plane or just generally an SSTO into orbit so by no means so don't take this as a perfect way to fly your thing it definitely works as you can see but this is just it works primarily because we have just an awful lot of awful amount of fuel so this extra fuel helps you with having a margin I mean a margin of error in terms of being inefficient flying up I think in theory this still should be enough for fuel to get us to Minmus, Minmus where we have Minmus, and land there and of course return. But I won't do anything or won't try this now, since the guide is only supposed to cover how to fly an SST into low Cuban orbit. Perfect, and now we have reached our goal for real, first time with of course a dem demonstration and more or less test flight now, we are here in orbit perfectly fine with air RCF thrusters if need necessary and yeah so that's more or less it so that's for you to get a, a guide how to build an SSTO and fly it also into orbit even though you could of course do better but on this note I would say thank you very much for watching I hope I helped you out and until next time spaceship out